the Teen Wolf Top 10 Countdown comes to a close where it all began in Beacon Hills Preserve with two best friends tracking down a body and one gets a mysterious bite. Hello, entertainment enthusiasts. This is Ray and this is the Fandom Realm. And today we are going to be reviewing my number one Teen Wolf episode. And that is episode one of season one, Wolf Moon. Now, I, I know a lot of people leave this episode out when they start ranking top 10 episodes, but this is always the episode I go back to when I pull out Teen Wolf and I start the episodes. Wolf Moon, I always start out with it and it never, ever disappoints. Now, this is going to be a recap and reaction, but I am going to tell you I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm not separating it up quite like I have in the last few videos. Those videos haven't really been viewed that much, so I want to shorten it up a little bit, so I need to go through and just be a little more off the cuff. I've had a lot of written out script for the previous videos, and I want to go more off the cuff here and just talk about what uh, is going on in Wolf Moon. But with Wolf Moon, I will tell you, I'm going to discuss what's happening, and I'm going to discuss how I liked it and all that, so the uh, recap and reaction will all be in at the same time. And always, just remember, this is a spoiler review, so just be warned. All right, now to start off our recap and reaction to Wolf Moon, we've got to get the episode started. And that all starts out with a sheriff's department investigation in, Be in Beacon Hills Preserve. Lots of dogs, lots of sheriffs, lots of people looking around, and we don't really know what's going on. But with that, we're going to flash to the house of Scott McCall, a teenage high schooler who is obviously a lacrosse player because he is fixing his lacrosse stick. He's sitting uh, he's doing some workouts. He's got his shirt off. He's doing some pull-ups, push-ups. Uh, he's getting ready for lacrosse season. And as he's getting ready for lacrosse season, he's in a situation where he is going to hear something. And he grabs his lacrosse stick and he starts searching around. And he's going to end up out on his front porch. And as he gets close to the steps, someone's going to hang down from the second floor. And it's his best buddy, Styles Stalinski. Styles sort of playful, sort of that friend who uh, is a little bit silly, but he's your best bud and is always going to be there and have your back. He's the son of the sheriff and he actually has heard that they are looking for a body. And the best thing is, it's in two pieces. And so he's going to talk Scott into going out and looking for the body. They hop in Styles' Jeep, they head to the preserve, and they're going to go out and they're going to be walking through uh, the woods, they're going to be looking around, they're going to be stumbling and falling, and it's dark and all kinds of things are going to be happening. And then eventually, Styles is going to run into his dad, who is not happy, but Scott was able to hide in the background, so they get separated. Scott's going to be wandering through, um, trying to figure out where to go. Um, he's going to end up almost being run over by a bunch of spooked deer, and uh, he loses his inhaler. As he does, he sees this gruesome sight, a werewolf. He doesn't really know it's a werewolf at the time, but he sees this monster, the monster chase chases him and ends up biting him in the side. And so with that, uh, Scott also does find the other half of the body. Uh, he rolled down a gorge and found the other half of the body. Uh, he's going to be scared. He's going to be wandering uh, through the back roads and he's going to end up um, at the highway. He's going to stagger out on the highway as a car just barely misses him. It's rainy. The road is wet. It's rainy. And who knows who was in that car. Now, of course, if you have watched Teen Wolf and you've watched through season three, you know who was in that car. I'm not going to tell you just yet. So eventually, apparently Scott finds a way home and we're going to skip to the next day at Beacon Hills High School. Now, just on that opening bit for Teen Wolf, I just loved how they put Scott and Styles together and showed their friendship and that they are basically in everything together. You know, Styles is a little bit of a troublemaker. Um, Scott's like your good kid and he's really wanting to be on a, a first team lacrosse and that means a lot to him. Um, Styles, uh, you know, he's going to be lacrosse too, but he's he's not quite as serious about it. He's okay with setting the bench. And I really enjoyed how they put together the opening of the episode. Now, moving on to uh, the next part here, we go to Beacon Hills High School and we're going to get introduced to a bunch of characters here. We're going to get introduced to Jackson, cross team captain, rich kid driving up in his uh, sports car. Uh, he's a real 
little jerk. We're going to get introduced to Lydia, sort of again, something of a rich kid debutante type who is dating Jackson, but whom Styles is forever in love with and in, in crushing on, but she doesn't give him the time of day, doesn't even really know who he is. And so those are a few more of our main characters. We're also going to get introduced to Allison Argent. We are introduced to her when Scott is in class and he's hearing someone talk on the cell phone, but nobody in class is doing it. And he looks outside and there's Allison talking on the cell phone. And yes, he has uh, started to heal and he is getting some powers because he can hear basically everything that's going on. And he knows that she lost a pen or didn't have a pen. So when she's introduced as a student in their classroom, she takes the desk behind him. He hands her a pen, sort of endearing himself to her. Now with that, we're going to go out and get to see lacrosse practice and we get to see a little bit more of what everything is about because uh, lacrosse is very big at Beacon Hills. Uh, They've won the state title the last few years and so with that uh, everybody comes out and they are uh, starting to practice. There's not a whole lot of respect for Scott and Styles. Scott is putting in the goal um, because the coach says that all the guys need some good practice scoring and so with that they start practice. Scott's in the goal and all of a sudden he starts showing all these awesome skills being able to block all the shots that uh, the team are uh, taking at goal and so people's heads are going to start to turn Lydia sort of notices him for the first time Allison has noticed uh, Scott and Styles, and so with that um, they're going to start to be noticed and even at one point of course Jackson he's going to be sort of the big bully and he's going to um, really go in and take a shot uh, to try try to score on Scott and of course you know he's thinking he's going to do it easy because he's the big stud captain and Scott stops his shot so everybody loves Scott uh, we're also going to see uh, of course Allison and Lydia starting to um, have a friendship and so that's going to be important uh, in the future as well now we are going to flash on to a scene where Scott and Styles are actually going through the forest uh, Scott is out there looking for his inhaler that he lost and they're having this conversation Scott is telling Styles that there's all kinds of weird things happening He's he can hear things and smell things that he shouldn't uh, he tells Styles he has some gun uh, Styles says he doesn't but when he checks his pocket um, he's surprised to see that there was uh, gum there and so it really starts to get Styles thinking as they're searching for the inhaler they're going to come upon Derek Hell Derek Eric Hell. We don't know a lot about him right now. Apparently the land they're on was owned by his family. We are going to get some background here as Styles reminds Scott that the Hells uh, died in a uh, fire at their house several years before. And so uh, with that, they sort of meet each other. Derek actually had his inhaler and he tosses it back to Scott. And Scott gets sort of a little bit of a, a funny feeling there. Now, sort of skip on, we go to the vet's clinic and Scott is there getting ready to do his jobs and he is in a situation where he is actually checking out his wound which is starting to heal and all of a sudden who shows up but Allison in the rain in her car she's she has hit a dog and she's brought the dog to the vet's clinic to have something done to it to to help it out uh Scott thinks it's had a, a broken leg he's going to put a cast on it he's watched his boss do it a lot so he thinks he can do it and uh with that he does uh, flash his gold eyes which he doesn't really know he has at the time to the dog to get it to calm down and uh, the two of them are going to uh, talk and Scott actually is going to end up asking Allison if she wants to go to the party with him and she says yes all right now in this little section, I really enjoyed the lacrosse and finding out more about Scott and Styles and what was going on with them and their background with lacrosse and just the idea of Scott wanting to be better. And uh, then he's going to be using his powers, and he doesn't really even know it yet, to become better. So uh, it's going to become pretty obvious to Styles that something is going on. But for Scott, he's gotten better. He's worked hard. He's done push-ups. He's done pull-ups. And so he's still in that situation where he doesn't see that... 
this might not be exactly right and that's okay for right now but it's something that you know i think in the future is something that they've inadvertently or not really inadvertently it's something in the future that they sort of got away from is letting them use their werewolf powers uh, in lacrosse although you know you'll end up having uh, liam playing you'll have um, plenty of supernaturals the other thing here I absolutely loved uh, Scott and Allison and the dog and that entire scene and that really being what sort of bonded them together and got them together and gave him the confidence to ask Allison uh, to go out to the uh, party with him. And so I really enjoyed that. And then, of course, uh, we did meet a new character here with uh, Derek Hell. And that is, um, he's sort of the tall, dark, and handsome uh, in this situation. And you had to wonder, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? And it took a long time for them to really establish that in the series and i like that i mean he was always sort of that tortured protagonist type character and so uh you know we got to see his strengths and weaknesses over the first few seasons and so i really enjoyed that as well now moving on in the episode so we're moving on we get to see scott he's laying in bed and it's sort of like he falls asleep and he starts to dream of course he doesn't know what's going on he's dreaming about being out in the forest he's just in a pair of shorts it's like he uh, just woke up and as he's uh, walking through the forest uh, he sees a shadow of what looks like a werewolf and that werewolf starts to run uh, scott starts to run at one point he jumps um, over something and ends up in uh, originally it looked like a creek or some type of 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 small watering hole okay but it ends up that he was actually i guess almost like sleepwalking and when he jumped over he actually jumped over a hedge and jumped into uh, someone's swimming pool now with that uh, we're also going to end up heading back out to the lacrosse field um this um as they head out to the lacrosse field jackson is going to confront scott he thinks scott is using some type of performance enhancing drugs and so with that they're going to end up out on on the lacrosse field and Scott's going to continue looking really good and coach is going to make uh, eventually a very big deal of uh, Scott being on the first team. Now with that happening um, we're going to skip apparently to Styles's room. I don't know if it was I don't think it was Scott's room. I think it was Styles's room and we skip to Styles's room and he's doing some reading and he's sort of in a mood and with that mood he is reading about lycanthropy and uh, uh, werewolves and so when Scott comes into the room he tells Scott that he is a uh, werewolf and he can't play in the lacrosse match and that he might be da- of course he could be dangerous to Allison as well and so with that um, they are going to get into a little argument and Scott pushes Styles into the room into the wall and um, as Scott leaves he's going to hit uh, Styles' chair and as Styles sort of recovers after Scott left the room, he's going to look at the back of the chair and there are claw marks down the back of the chair. And that's going to basically prove to Styles that Scott is a werewolf. Now I'm going to say one thing that I really like about a uh, Wolf Boone is how they sort of dealt with Scott's transformation and the fact that uh, basically they used scenes like him going to bed and this almost like he was sleepwalking to introduce him into the fact he was trans- transforming and i really enjoy this i thought this was a a very creative way to do it it's a little bit new from uh, most werewolf type genre tvs and movies and with that um you know it it was something um also where they were able to show how styles is that best friend who is figuring everything out and this happens in a lot of these young adult type fantasies where the the best friend figures things out before uh, the main character does and it also really showed how strong Scott has it also shows how strong Scott's original feelings for Allison are and and to play lacrosse in that he basically shoves Styles into the wall Uh, potentially he could have hurt him there and nobody would have wanted that and Scott didn't want that but it also goes to does he have enough control to date Allison to take her to the dance does he have enough control to play lacrosse as a werewolf and so a lot of nice things 
that they were able to put into this episode. Now, moving on, Scott is actually going to be at home and he is in a situation where he's taking a shower or at least getting out of the shower uh, t- um, at home and his mom's going to come by and Scott's standing there in a towel talking to her and uh, he she asks if it's a date and he, of course, thinks it is. And the big thing there is uh, there's a little bit of comedy because uh, Melissa, Scott's mom, asks if they need to have the talk and Scott says that he's not having the sex talk with her and she's like oh no I don't mean that I mean about putting uh, she was giving him the keys to the car um, and basically what she was meaning was make sure you fill the car back up with gas before you come home so he's going to get ready he goes out and picks up Allison and they head to the party of course uh, the party is on a full moon night here and Scott's going to start having some issues with uh, turning he's going to actually run away from the party he leaves Allison there uh, basically when he leaves her there Derek is going to come by and take care of her he says that he's a friend of Scott's and so uh, we're going to see Scott has made it home and he has gotten into the shower into the tub he's letting cold water run all over top of him and um, he's looking at his claws, his hands that are forming into claws Um, he's going to hear, he's also going to look in the mirror as his teeth are changing as well his eyes are changing and then somebody's going to knock on the door and it's Styles, so Scott comes to the door and it's uh, to talk to Styles and Styles tells him that he basically Styles thinks the Alpha is Derek and Derek is apparently um, with Allison. And so they're sort of discussing that and Scott's going to end up locking, they're on the opposite sides of the door talking to each other. And so Scott's going to lock the door and he's actually going to run out, jump out the window uh, in his uh, wolf form. And I do enjoy their little wolf form here. that They don't go full all out. But this was, of course, due to special effects budgets. But we get to see more of Scott's uh, wolf form. Uh, he's in front of the moon and he is, uh, we get to see his ears grow, which I thought was very interesting as well. Now, talking about this little section here, again, I, I love Scott and his mom. They're also very innocent. I love, and I haven't really mentioned that, how Scott Styles and a lot of the secondary characters like uh, Melissa, uh, they're very innocent, especially Scott and Styles in this. And so we're going to get to see how they react to somebody becoming a werewolf and how that changes them over time. And I thought that was very important in the series. And of course, we know eventually Scott becomes a true alpha. And so he's basically going to go, go through this very well. Again, another part of the episode with dark and brooding Derek in it, not really knowing which way he was going uh, for a while. It does sound or at least look like they are uh, trying to make him the bad guy. And uh, so with that, the scene with Scott and Styles when they were talking as Scott was changing and just knowing how much pain Scott was in and he was scared about what was going to happen and he sort of shut Styles out of the room so he wouldn't hurt him and then he went and jumps out of the window and heads out away i really love that and as i said um, i i like their transfer transformation for the werewolves you know a lot of people want them to be wolves a lot of people want them to be the full-on werewolf but i was satisfied with this i always thought it was a cool way to go in showing they were werewolves now moving on uh we are coming uh up on the close of the episode here and scott has left his house he jumped out the window he's going to uh, be running through the forest. It's the full moon, and he's going to be running through the forest. Meanwhile, Styles is speeding over to Allison's house. He's wanting to see if she's okay because they're worried that Derek may have done something to her. And so uh, Styles is going to get to her house. He knocks on the door. Allison's mom is there, and she's going to call Allison down. She was upstairs. Derek had gotten her home. Meanwhile, we skip to Scott in the forest, and he's going to be running through the forest when he's going to run into Derek. Now, the big thing here, uh, as he runs into uh, Derek, he actually had smelled Allison's jacket, and Derek had gotten her jacket and hung it up on the tree to sort of draw Scott to him, and uh, Derek's going to grab him by the throat. He's basically going to be trying to talk to him when all of a sudden a flashbang hits, and there's a bright light, and uh, we see a group of men approaching. Of course, we know this is the hunter, and uh, the man up front is Allison's dad. Of course, Scott does 
doesn't know that at the moment. And so these men, the hunters, are apparently there for Scott and Derek. Uh, at one point, Derek does tackle Styles to try to get him out of the way. Eventually, Derek tells Scott they're hunters and basically what they do. He tells them that he needs to be listening to Derek. And then um, Scott is going to get shot in the arm by an arrow that temporarily pins him to a tree. And the hunters are going to be on their way. And eventually, Derek is going to free Scott. And so as they get away from the Argents, Derek is going to confront Scott. Scott, of course, doesn't want to be a werewolf. He's vocal about that. Uh, Derek basically says, why would you not want to be a werewolf? You can hear things. You have basically superpowers. It's a gift. And he tells Scott that he's going to need him uh, in order to uh, help control his powers and that they are brothers. And of course, that's sort of a little bit of a funny little statement there because later on, of course, when Scott takes Liam as as his first beta, uh, he uses that, those same words uh, to uh, Liam. But with that, Scott is going to wander out of the forest as Derek has left, and we're going to get to see Styles driving up the road in the Jeep, and he's going to pick up Scott. Um, they're going to basically discuss uh, Scott being a werewolf, and Styles thinks it's pretty cool. Scott, of course, really hates the idea, and and Styles tells him that he, um, if he has to, he'll be there for him. He'll support him. He'll chain him up and feed him live mice if he has to. So uh, that's going to give us to our or get us to our last scene. And Scott and Allison are going to be talking. Allison is not happy with Scott because uh, he left her at party. Scott basically says he can't really tell her, but she just needs to trust him. And she's going to basically um, take his word for it. And um, you know she's got that nice little smile and she responds to him. Well, it turns out her dad is there to pick her up and Scott catches a a smell and turns around and Allison's dad standing there staring at Scott is the lead hunter from the night before in the park and Scott recognizes him but he doesn't necessarily recognize Scott as he waves to Allison and her dad as they get ready to leave and with that that ends episode one of Teen Wolf now just talking uh, in general about this uh, last little scene here. Uh, the big thing here is just, again, we've come through this entire episode and we've seen Scott and Styles' relationship continue to be strong, uh, even after Scott probably scared the crap out of Styles uh, when he turned and when they were having arguments, but he's going to be there for Scott. Um, also, we still don't know about Derek at this point. He's still that brooding bad guy possible, and so we're going to have to see, but basically, he's pointing out what everybody thinks. Hey, is it that bad being a werewolf because you have all of these gifts? And then, of course, the surprise with the hunters. And I can tell you, I remember watching this first episode and when it uh, was revealed that Allison's dad was the lead hunter, um, I just remember a gasp and thinking, boy, this is going to get good now. And it really did for basically six seasons and a hundred episodes. Now, with that, I do want to say a couple things uh, just in general here and this might ramble just a little bit but it won't be long um, I really love this episode uh, just the relationship building between Scott and Styles. Uh, it really cemented the relationship we needed them to have throughout the entire series or I don't think this series would have ever gone where it, where it did and I think they had to do that in the first episode they had to get people behind this series in the first episode because if they didn't it could have been disaster you know a lot of people were wondering about Teen Wolf when they heard that it was happening and they were expecting something like Michael J. Fox's Teen Wolf, something that was a little bit... Uh, campy and, and sort of just comedic and we got something that was so much better in the Teen Wolf series for that 100 episodes something that was young adult um, but something that was um, also grown up it was uh, fantastical uh, you, you had all the fantasy that you needed you have had different supernatural creatures you had lots of different things going on and to me all of that was set up in this first episode introducing werewolves 
Styles, introducing Scott and Styles, introducing our main characters in Derek and Lydia and Allison and Jackson, and then of course Scott and Styles and Melissa, Scott's mom. And I just think they did a brilliant job of kicking this series off. It's to me one of the best premieres that um, I've seen in the last 10 or 15 years. I think it's definitely in the top 10. And it got a lot of fans out there uh, looking at this and shipping it. And I, I, I was one of those. And I still love this show. And I am so looking forward to the movie. And that, of course, is coming out in a couple days on the 26th. Watch my community board on YouTube. Possibly also, if you are on my Twitter, uh, I'll be making sort of an announcement when um, I will be doing the review for Teen Wolf. Honestly, I'm hoping to try to, try to go live when I watch it. Um, and then also, people, we need to get behind Wolf Pack as well. There's nothing really out there. Teen Wolf now, we've lost a lot of fantasy on TV. Get behind it. And, um, you know, if it's, if it's bad, then you know, there's not much we can do about it. But if it's got potential, let's get out there and support it. And I'm, of course, going to be doing a weekly, actually probably uh, a bi-weekly, maybe weekly, and I will be doing a review of Wolfpack as well. Now, with that, I hope everyone has enjoyed this countdown. There haven't been a lot of comments, so please, in the comments, uh, put some put some info down about things that um, you think were important about Teen Wolf, um, things that, you know, how would you rank the episodes? How do you rank the episodes that I put out there? And I'd love to see that in the comments. I will tell you, I did make a mistake in the rankings. Uh, season 3A, that is with the Alphas. Uh, it's season finale. Should have been my number 7 episode. Somehow, somehow I didn't get it in the ratings. But it should have been number 7, so that would have pushed some things down. But I'm not going back through and re-rating things, so I'm keeping things as they are. But if you were wondering about that episode, yes, I should have had it in the top 10. Now, with that, again, I hope you enjoyed the re uh, review and the countdown. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below. And I'm going to see you all next time, hopefully for that Teen Wolf movie, and hopefully it's as awesome as we all want it to be. Have a great day.